Hey everybody, Brad Linder back at you again with another card of the day. We've got uh, oh, Battle Cat from the He-Man set that I've been working on. Uh, I know this is a little more of a close-up than anybody wanted, but when I did the series, I was doing profiles primarily, so I wanted to grab onto that one with that set and knock this guy out and add him on. Uh, hey Nathan, glad you made it, man. Thank you very much. Brian, cool to see you, buddy. Uh, I'm going to share this with the page real quick and then uh, the YouTube channel, and I'm going to get right on this, and we're going to knock it out. So uh, bear with me just a split second here, and here we go. Cool deal. All right. Now, I've got my Copics here, and I'm going to jump right into this one. Uh, this is going to be fairly simple, fairly, fairly, fairly. I'm going to check the highlights here and make sure this looks light enough. Now I'm going to, I wanted to go with the point, not the wedge. Now I'm going to jump right into this. And because it's his gums here that are up top, you're not going to see this underneath uh, the mask here like you normally would. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in here on this beard. And I'm going to start lining this out with the light green. This is a G21 lime green, which is really cool because it doesn't, uh, necessarily hold up to what you would think of a lime green because most lime greens are colored by the the uh, peel you know they're colored by the peel color rather than the tissue uh, inside this is actually the meat of the fruit so um, that that's the color that it's going after and I really dig this marker because of that uh, it's a great paint and it comes off really clean and smooth and it dries about eh, maybe a shade and a half lighter it's more like the cap, and you can see the color there, I hope. Uh, there, there's a little bit of a difference in the shading, the way it dries in the wet ink versus the uh, dried version. So it actually looks like the cap when it dries. It's very, very clean. Uh, it, it's a nice, refreshing, light color. So, uh, of course, that could be a, a mental association with the, the name of the color. Um, going to grab <clears throat> my... G7, uh, my Geo7, now this is a Nile green, that's what this is called, and this is going to be the body, so uh, we're going to nail this real quick, right up under here, we're going to see this face right here, and that's going to be one of the yellow stripes on his cheeks, so we're going to have that going on, now I know that doesn't look like the armor right there, but it actually is his face, uh, I just sloped it in just a little bit to differentiate, when I drew it so that's the reason why you see that kind of discoloration and uh, this will all be pink of course so but um because he has a pink palette but we're gonna knock this out fairly quickly I'm gonna trim this out real quick so I don't screw up this this uh, guideline here for the artwork and then I'm gonna go off and just knock this out with the wedge so we're gonna get this one popping really really quick here and I removed all of the graphite so there's not a problem with that this is going to be bright and vibrant very clean it's going to be a fun piece hey Alfred glad you made it man oh busy 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 bud long busy hard day today with the holiday even uh, in tow it's been just crazy a lot of good production, so a lot of good production today. So I'm just going to go right over this to base coat it. And the reason I'm going up high like this first is because when I come back over this, when it dries and I lay down this ink, what's going to come in and naturally happen is you see that scaling right there in the middle? You see how I don't know if it shows up on here or not, but there's a wave in the ink from the wedge which is why I don't normally use them but if you see that little streak where I start and where I stop you'll see that kind of um, a line right there right well when you use these markers the cool thing about Copics is you can go over that like this a couple of times and kind of gradient uh, stroke this thing out to where it comes across that way now See, it's going to give a natural fur effect when the ink dries because you see those ripples right there. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one in the chest. There's one right there. That's going to make a rippling effect for the natural look of fur. 
just a little tidbit for you. So, you know, I love doing that, and um, it, it's something I have a blast doing because of the fact that I know these little tricks about this stuff. And not a lot of people are using them because they're so afraid of actual live ink, you know, and that's what this is. It's live ink. And most people want to run and hide behind digital stuff, and you can't really do that in the same regard. You know, uh, there is a difference. And no, I'm not going to put the shining on here. I'm not going to put in the uh, highlights and all that good stuff. I am going to go flat just like the uh, cartoon and keep it clean and keep it original. And because I'm going to come in with different colors of red, I want to keep it very, uh, very flat at first. So this will work as my base and uh, we can color that in. But, yeah, people are so afraid of using live ink, man. It's just crazy. I love using live ink. I love using live mediums um, like pencils, pastels, crayons. I even use Crayola, man. I mean, it's not it's not above me at all. I love using Crayola. Uh, they're a really great marker for fine line work and for primary colors. But I tend to get the blockier ones rather than the finer pins, which I have them both. But the finer pins tend to streak a little more, so I don't use them as often. But if I'm going to base coat something, you betcha. You betcha I'll save my expensive markers for the overcoat, for the detailing. But I will go in and, you know, I'll burn up a, I'll, I would rather burn up a dollar box of markers, you know, even if they're three or four bucks, I'd rather burn them up than buy, burn up these uh, Copics for base coloring. You know, however I am using it on this card because I know what I'm going to do with it and I want you guys to get uh, better quality than what you would normally get with something like that. But, I mean, if I had to just do a filler piece, like a background for a page or something, and I knew I was going to do it digitally uh, later and wanted to get the book knocked out, I would knock it out with uh, something simple and just get it done and go in and enhance it with uh, digital or, like I said, the overlay of quality markers or paints afterward. So, you know, there's there's a difference. People are so afraid of using medium now, and um, art supplies are becoming kind of like a uh, art supplies are becoming kind of like a uh, a clothing fad kind of deal. It's like you know you got to wear Nike or you got to wear Reebok or you got to wear you know Adidas or whoever's whatever model is famous these days. You know, with the shoes and stuff. Uh, I don't keep up with that. Um, I'm a sketcher and Reebok fan myself because of the comfort of my big feet, but <laughs> but that's just you know part for course. But uh, making sure I don't run over into his eyes here, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those crazy things where you just have to go in and do what suits you, and go for it. And you know, it's like I'm writing about in my new book. Um, I'm, I'm writing a new book and a new coaching program, and it's called uh, Burn the Freaking Boats, you know, and it's about uh, how so many cultures used to burn their ships during battle to keep from having the chance to retreat. There was no alternative but to win, and, you know, life is like that. We don't have that adventure purpose anymore because of the modern era. We can go run, running back home to safety, you know, running back to our day jobs or whatever. We can go online and have that virtual adventure and then come out of it in reality and say, well, you know, that didn't work. That didn't make me my $500 million, you know, and didn't make me filthy rich. So I'm on to the next thing and <clears throat> never even think twice about it. But the reason you didn't make the money in that attempt is because you never had to really try. So think about that one, you know. Think about that one. And same thing with comic books, uh, especially comics, because these guys are, man, so many of these artists out here are prima donnas, and I see it every day, day in, day out. And it's just people going, hey, man, you know, I, I want to do comics, and, you know, I'm a comic creator, I'm a comic creator. What's the last comic you made, you know? What's the last thing you did? What's the last uh, project you worked on? What are you working on now? What's the last thing you had drawn today? What's the last thing you drew yesterday, you know? Uh, I say all the time, you're not an artist today if you didn't draw. Well, that's a big thing with me. That's a huge thing with me, in fact. Uh, I don't want anybody coming along and saying, you know, hey, man, I, you know, I'm a comic artist, too, and I draw. But what would you draw? Well, I drew this pinup yesterday. Well, did you draw any comics, though? Well, no. Well, then you're a pinup artist. You're not a comic artist. There's a difference. 
Well, hey, man, that's cruel to say because that's not true. That's not that's not what I said, and that's not me, and you know whatever. And I see that all the time. I see people come up and say, you know, I'm a comic artist, and I, you know, I did this and this and this. But well, what are you working on right now? Because I can show you 40 pages right now that I've been working on the last couple of weeks, and drop that bomb on your lap and say, you know, this is what I do. <clears throat> I'd rather not do that because I don't want to reveal the books, but. You know, if I had to in a pinch, I could. And that takes a lot of people off because of the fact I'm grabbing my pinks here. That takes a lot of people off. This is an RV11, by the way, if you want to know what I'm doing the palette with. Because of the fact that I called them out on that and they call it, you know, I've been called out numerous times and it's just like, what did you draw today? Well, check my video timeline. You know, check my YouTube channel. I draw something major every day. It may not look major to you because it's 30 minutes with a card or it's 30 minutes with a picture or 30 minutes with penciling, but I guarantee you, guess what? That's not all I do. And I've done more with that than you can show me right now. So, you know, no offense, but shut up. <laughs> I get tired of that. I get tired of that. And I get tired of these guys going along and crawl, you know, crawling up on, on people as trolls and jumping in and saying, you know, I, I wish you would shut up because you can't draw on this, that, and the other. Well, guess what? That guy's drawing something right now, and you're griping about him. Tell me what you've drawn today. I'm going to call you out on it, you know? What have you drawn today to complain about that? Do you draw better than he does? Show me your stuff in comparison to his. You know, if you want to call somebody out and judge him, prepare to be judged. Same thing with anything else. This is an R32, by the way, which is a little bit hotter pink. Uh, it's called a peach. I'm going to do the back of the palette with this one. And I'm also going to do the gums with this one. Okay. Now we're going to be able to see that. I'm going to do the gums up here. And I'm going to do a little bit shading on the lip. And the reason I want that is because I want that in the palette. I want it to warm up in the shadows there. But I also want it to have some life to it. So separate it from the tongue. So that's the reason I'm doing that. But, you know, I hear that all the time. And... I hear, but I can draw, you know, but I can't draw as good as you do. Well, how do you know? Have you drawn a comic book? Hey, Sonia, glad you made it. Now I'm going to grab this uh, RV04, which is a shock pink. It's kind of a little bit brighter. It's got more of a, a neon or highlighter type feel to it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and accent some of this stuff, and it'll give it that warm, uh, typical He-Man color and feel to it and pull that out quite a bit but uh, I like the idea of you know doing something every day and bringing it all to life and that's why I do these cards for you guys you know because I do this for me just as much as I do for you and thank you for being here because I so appreciate that but understand that in the creativity process I have to do this for myself as well because that's what I do this for it's getting comfortable and doing this in front of you guys and it's helping with my comic books because of the fact that I do this every day. I'm not afraid to get out and draw in front of you guys and prove that I can do this stuff, you know? And that's part of the big payoff for this. Now I'm going to grab a gray real quick because I want to go into the, the old teeth here and highlight the fangs. So we've got those going on and give them a little bone look. Give them a little constructive color. Now, whenever I come back on these things and uh, come back and look at these cards later, I'm like, man, what was I thinking with that one? But you know what? I leave it alone because of the fact that you guys like them so much and keep coming back. And I know that in the long run, it's the best thing for me because of the fact that I can't go back and fix it and change it the way I want to. Because once, you know, again, live ink is live ink. You can't really go mess with that. Now, what I'm doing right now is... Uh, before I go back to the topic, this is G17. This is a forest green. And I'm just kind of overlaying this to give it a little more dynamic uh, look and break it up into variations in the fur so that we have a gradation, like I was talking about before. And I'm making that fur kind of pop out in three or four different colors and layer without actually doing it in three or four different colors because of the fact that the density of the ink that I'm laying down right now. So that's how you get that kind of look. Okay, and go right up to the edge. Don't be afraid. Just go right up to the edge. Boom. Done deal. 
and then just pull it out a little bit, and there you go. And when it dries, it'll have that nice uh, furry gradation. Because what you use is the straight edge of the of the wedge at the bottom, and it'll make that hairy look. Now, now that I've got him all toned up here, I'm going to go in. I know you guys hate it when I do this, but I'm going to go in with the best red possible, which is a base Sharpie. And I'm going to tone up these shadows real quick. And I'm going to pop this out quite a bit. But as I was saying on topic, you know, that's the reason I do this every day. Because of the fact that I want to get out in front of you guys and say, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. Because not only in marketing, uh, you know, with my marketing work and my, my self-help stuff and uh, my coaching, I also do comics, obviously. And I've been told for years by so many people that I actually helped as clients to make household names and internet famous. And I've been told by these guys, you know, hey, man, you've got to stick with one niche. The work you do is great, but you'll never make two niches popular. Well, guess what? Internet marketing or digital marketing and social media expert positioning and working in comic books and publishing and getting stuff out there for you guys is what I do. I work in a few niches, not just one, not just two, but I actually have uh, worked in about seven different niches now. And the reason that I do that is because of the fact that, one, I want to walk the walk of what I'm teaching and what I'm sharing with you guys, and two, is the fact that nobody's going to tell me I can't do something. I'm sorry. You, you just may as well just pick a spot and kiss my butt. Uh, I'm not that type of person, and I don't want any students to feel that way either. I don't want anybody that I work with to ever feel that way. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. You go out and do it and prove them wrong. And I tell my kid that every day. I told my daughter that every freaking day. So, you know, we just went through an experience with a teacher, and I'm not going to throw down my whole personal business, but we just went through an experience with one of her teachers that was out on leave, and she was, took her time to uh, protect the substitute student teacher that jacked up my kids' grades. Uh, she turned in the paperwork. The teacher didn't apply it to her grade and left her hanging. Well, we went to... Uh, an extreme level to get that corrected and you know my daughter is extremely upset about that because math is her favorite class and you know uh, if you've got a kid you know how it is they should not spend their entire career in school crying over their grades and the distrust that they have for an educator that is supposed to be there just as much as a parent is in regards to leading them away as a leader and I have a big problem with that and I'll tell you uh, not just only as a dad, but as a businessman and a human being, as a professional, it hits me on about 10 different levels as to what happened there. And I don't do well with that. You know, I don't take well with bullying. I don't take well with shaming. I don't take well with any of that garbage. And to see somebody come after, you know, someone that was interested in math and still is, thank goodness, and wants to make a career out of it, uh, you know, I'm not going to let you jack that up. I'm not going to let you damage that 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 hope. And that's what I teach my students as well, just, you know, just in general life, because I live that way. And anybody that knows me well enough knows that that's exactly how I am. I'm hardcore about everything that I do, and I do it at the extreme level of getting it done, getting in there, and I'll rock that mess up, man. I'll mess some stuff up. Because if you tell me I can't do it, I'm the first one to prove you wrong. And it's not a challenge of just doing it because someone, you know, dared me to do it. I'm not one of those macho type of people that says, you know, uh, you can't dare me, man. I'll do it anyway. I can do anything. I'm not like that. But what I'm saying is don't tell me not to do something because I, I desire to do it and you don't know how. Because I guarantee you I do. So, you know, go through your life that way in art, in creation, and in business. All of it's interlocked anyway, especially with the, the Internet marketing days, you know, um, with the way the Internet is connected to pretty much everything, you're going to have to innovate or you're going to die, you know, and that's unfortunately the way it is. But so many people get tied up in all that garbage and they, they miss the mark because they're so focused on one particular spot, they miss the big picture. But then other people get in, so engulfed with doing everything and get overwhelmed with information overload in the same way of I've got to do everything 
that they missed the mark. So, you know, you got to have a happy medium and keep the eye on the prize of both. And if you don't, you're going to get your butt handed to you very quickly and very easily. So, uh, you know, I hope that's a little bit of insight on that, and I hope it helps. But, you know, that's one of those things I just hate seeing uh, people get pushed around in that manner. And, you know, I've been burned. I've had plenty of people say, well, you know, I did this and I did that. And, you know, uh, I take credit for this one and I take credit for that one. And I, I know for a fact I did that. I'm just like, bite me. I have nothing to prove to you. So, you know, I've been burned by many, many deals like that. And that's part of why I had such a big problem with coming out and saying, you know, hey, this is me and this is what I do and going into the public eye for the training that I do. And it, it's one of those things. Oh, I painted my finger again. Oh, well, life happens. But uh, anyway, that's one of those deals where I just love to see these people come in and they'll be all like, well, you can't do that and you can't do this. And I'm like, really? It's already done. It's already done, man. I did that last night while you were sleeping. I talked about the idea yesterday and it was done last night, you know, this morning while you were sleeping at two or three o'clock in the morning. I'm up doing it and it's finished. So whatever. But anyway, take it with a grain of salt. And uh, this is a YG03 here. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and come in and shade this up a little bit and uh, add a little more depth to it for these whiskers and I hope you guys dig this I know it's a little bit of a heavy topic on this one but it's one of those things that I just needed to talk about you know and uh, it needed to be said so don't let anybody badger you get out there and make your stuff whether it's comics whether it's internet marketing whether it's a book whether it's a novel whether it's a, a painting if it's just a you know being supportive of your kid Get out there and get it done and do your thing. And, you know, anybody that raises the red flag and says, I want to bully you, you tell them, bring it on and tell them I gave you permission to kick their butt. So go for it. But as of this point, I'm going to call it there and say, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you picked up a little bit of insight. And I'll see you again tomorrow. As always, we have this rock for a limited amount of time. It's a great party, but we got to prepare for the next generation while we're here, too, to wrap this one up, clean it up so we have a party space for the next generation. Talk to you tomorrow. Take care.